good morning, Man of Church. Jeff Christensen here again, and welcome to part three of our look at the sufficiency and supremacy of God for Morning Manna. The last two days, we've talked about the supremacy of God the Father, and now, today and tomorrow, I want to talk to you about the supremacy of God the Son. Years ago, I remember being in a season of life where, um, honestly, I was just living in idolatry. I was saved, I was in a great church, I read my Bible, mostly. I could hear from God, I was familiar with God's voice, but there was something in my life that I just wasn't willing to let go of. I ultimately knew I was making bad decisions because of that, but without going into too much detail here, I actually thought that this idol in my life was gonna be a good thing in the end. And I remember waking up one Sunday morning with this sense of like, like the eye of God was just on me, examining me. And I, I knew it had to do with this situation, with this idol that I was holding on to. And it felt so heavy, I didn't even get out of bed to go to church. I just laid there in the silence of God's examination. And finally, I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, son, you know what you need to do here. It's time to let this go. And I remember I actually told him no. I told him, no, I, I can't do that, but just you wait and see. I'll turn this around. I'll, I'll make this something that you can be pleased with and that you can bless. Now, <laughs> part of me knew that I was fooling myself, but honestly, I, just, I couldn't admit it. And then of course, within six months, the whole thing came crashing down on me. And it was a, it was a difficult lesson to learn. Now, at the time of Paul's letter to the Ephesians, Idols were an obvious, everyday reality. In fact, part of Paul's purpose in writing the letter was to encourage his readers, many of whom were recent converts from paganism and occult religions. He wanted to encourage them not to return to their idols and to understand that Jesus is greater than every other spirit or false god. But honestly, this isn't just a thing of the past. Even as believers today, we still struggle with sin and we still tend to collect idols in our lives from time to time. What Paul had to say to his readers uh, in and around Ephesus is still just as relevant for us today. The good news that Paul proclaims here is that Jesus is exalted above all our idols and struggles with sin. And in talking about this, I want to look at a passage in Ephesians that might seem a bit unusual because we sometimes think of it as just uh, being a marriage passage. But here it is, Ephesians 5, 26 through 27. It starts out this way, husbands love your wives, here's the point, as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. See, God the Son gave himself up for his people, and in paying our penalty, he defeated the powers of darkness. He demonstrated that he is greater than those powers. He is exalted above them. He is greater than our sin and our, our waywardness. He did everything that was needed to cleanse us and sanctify us, set us apart, and make us the perfect bride for him. It says there, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. See, Jesus is greater than our sin. Jesus is more powerful than our idols. And in his death and resurrection, he has actually put those powers of darkness on cosmic display, making a mockery of them and redeeming us and working his life in us. And this is good news. So it's good to be with you today, Man of Church. Come back tomorrow for part four of our look at the sufficiency and supremacy of God for Morning Manna.